everyone, my name is Alana Waltman and I'm a research technician at CEI and this is the Conk research class that I had the pleasure of advising alongside Candice and without further ado, here's our presentation. So, our project is the abundance and distribution of juvenile queen conch in the Schooner Keys. I'm Katie Koch. I'm Owen Ryerson. You got Bonner. Clara Hoffman. Ethan Vitas. Olivia Gomez. So, queen conch or Strombus gigas are marine gastropod mollusk. They're very culturally important to the Bahamas. As you can see, they're found on the national crest, representing the country's marine biodiversity. They're also a staple in many Bahamian dishes. Queen conch are economically important in both commercial and sustenance fishing. The species brings in six to seven million dollars annually in exports alone. Queen conch are ecologically important as they bottom feed off of algae and detritus off of the seafloor. This maintains health of ecosystems and it also maintains the interconnected habitat mosaic between seagrass beds, mangroves, and patch reefs. Queen conch range from southern Florida through the Caribbean and Bermuda to northern South America. <coughs> Queen conch have density dependent reproduction, which means that they depend on their densities in a hectare to reproduce, conching a minimum of 47 to 50 conch per hectare to produce egg masses. These egg masses then develop into larvae villagers, which float through the ocean currents until they can settle on Laurentia. Laurentia is the seaweed that conch need to metamorphosize into the juvenile phase. From the juvenile phase, conch will continue maturing into the subadult phase, and then right from the subadult phase, after about six years, they become sexually mature adults. Juvenile conch are defined as conch that have no shell lip, and these conch bury themselves in the sand close to shore to protect themselves from predators. Subadults are when they have this shell lip, but it is less than 15 millimeters thick. Once this shell lip reaches 15 millimeters thick, they become sexually mature adults, which means that they can reproduce. And adult conch are found close to shore or in deeper oceanic regions. So currently in the Bahamas, there's a number of regulations protecting conch. One of which is it is illegal to scuba dive for conch. Another is it is illegal to harvest conch with a shell lip of less than five millimeters. However, from previous research, we know that this is not very effective because conch are not sexually mature until they have a shell lip of at least 15 millimeters. Harvesting juvenile conch is detrimental to the population because it does not allow itself to replenish. These regulations are not strictly enforced due to a lack of funding. Conch can also be found in the CITES 2 appendix, which means their, their exports must be monitored in order to prevent the species from becoming extinct. The problem our research is addressing is the overfishing of juvenile queen conch in the Schooner Keys. So a shell moon is a pile of conch shells that have been discarded by fishermen. You can see one right over there. In 2003, a study was conducted by the Cape Luther Institute, which determined that 32% of the shells in these middens in South Luther were illegally harvested juveniles. This study was conducted again in 2014, and it was determined that that number went up to 49.2%. This shows a significant increase in the amount of juvenile harvested conch in the area. This map here is of South Luther and the Schooner Keys. The gold star is us here at the Allen School, and right here is the Schooner Keys where our study was conducted. The Schooner Keys are right out there. Um, the main purpose of our study was to determine whether or not the Schooner Keys were still in nursery ground. In the last study of the area, which was in 1993 by Stoner et al., it was determined that the Schooner Keys are the largest nursery ground in the Bahamas, with an average density of 228 conch per hectare. Our two main objectives are to quantify the density of juvenile conch per hectare in the Schooner Keys and to map the boundaries of aggregations of juvenile conch in the Schooner Keys. So in order to conduct this study, we took one of the boats over here out to the Schooner Keys. And we are represented by that gold star, and this is the Schooner Keys up here. And we're partnered with Shedd Aquarium, and their lead scientists developed our methodology where we place this grid over our study site. We conduct five 200 meter tows within each sector of each grid. Four of them originate from each corner of each sector, and one originates from the center. And the direction that we tow is randomly selected before each time. There are two snorkelers that are towed behind the boat on a manito board, and they're diving up and down and counting the number of juvenile, subadult, and adult conch. In order to rapidly assess our study area and make our data more comparable with historical data, we changed our methodology for classifying life stage from using lip thickness to using siphonal length, which is this length right here. And we estimate that this is about 10 centimeters, 
and we say that a juvenile is less than 10 centimeters, a subadult is greater than 10 centimeters, and an adult is greater than 10 centimeters with a fully flared lip. Uh, when the snorkelers identify an aggregation, which is more than two, two conch per 10 meters squared, they'll raise their hand out of the water and we'll mark that as a waypoint on the GPS. And at the end of each tow, we'll collect the number of juvenile, subadult, and adult conch, as well as taking the depth and temperature at the beginning and end of each tow. So this is the table we compiled with all of our data. Here you can see the 24 grids that we towed in. We then used descriptive statistics to analyze our data. We found the mean number of juvenile conch per grid. We found the standard error of the mean, the mean depth, the mean temperature, and the number of toes per grid. Here you can see our largest mean number of juvenile conch. This is when we found an aggregation of 33 conch on one of our toes. You can also see that we found 13 grids with no conch in them whatsoever. This is the mean depth range where we found conch from 5 to 17 feet. Some of our key findings, in a total of 117 toes and 24 grids, we found 124 juvenile queen conch. The largest aggregation we found was 33 conch. The mean depths where we found conch was from 1 to 17 feet, and the mean depth we found aggregations was from 6 to 17 feet. In conclusion, the average density which we determined for the schooner keys was 8.24 juvenile queen conch per hectare. So this map was made using ArcGIS. These are the 24 grids that we towed in. Each dot represents one tow. The size and color of the dots correlate with the densities of conch that we found on the tow. The larger red dots are where we found aggregations, while the smaller yellow dots are where we found no conch. As you can see in the southwest grid, we only conducted three toes because a portion of the grid was in deep sea, and in the grid directly above it, we conducted six toes. This is a map of the juvenile queen conch nursery boundaries determined by the blue line. This was determined by Stoner et al. in 1993, where in the study they determined that the density of juvenile queen conch in the schooner keys was 228 conch per hectare. This is our study site, the red line, represents the surveyed area, while the yellow line is a minimum convex polygon of the juvenile queen conch nursery boundaries. We determined that the density of juvenile queen conch in this area is now 8.24 uh, juvenile queen conch per hectare, compared to the 228 determined by Stoner et al. It is important to note that our study site was not as large as Stoner et al's. We have, deter we have attributed this decrease in nursery area, as well as the decrease in density of conch within the nursery area, to the increase in illegal juvenile queen conch harvesting, which we have seen in the shell bin data comparison, where between 2003 and 2014, there was a 17.2% increase in illegal juvenile conch harvesting. So, if this trend of illegally harvesting juveniles continues, it will impact the culture, economy, and ecosystem of the Bahamas. Culturally, queen conch are an iconic symbol of the Bahamas, and they are served in many traditional food dishes. Uh, it will impact the culture because conch are such a strong part of Bahamian culture. Economically, fishing is the third largest industry in the Bahamas, and conch produce six to seven million dollars annually in exports. If populations continue to decrease, many Bahamians will lose their source of income. And ecologically, conch are bottom feeders that graze algae and clean the ocean floor. And if fishermen continue to illegally harvest juveniles, the ecosystem will be imbalanced. So we are expanding our study, or we're continuing our study by expanding our grid to incorporate northwest to the Schooner Keys and southeast towards Cape Eleuthera. Future studies could be genetic sampling, and scientists are currently looking at genetic variation among different conch populations through DNA sequencing. And another study could be ocean modeling, which looks at how the currents flow and how the larvae of the conch are dispersed. And both of these studies could help us gain a better understanding of where conch are. And our data shows the aggregations of juvenile queen conch in the schooner keys and the mean depths and temperatures that they reside in. And this data could be used to potentially inform future decision makers on marine resource management. These are our acknowledgments, and we'd like to thank Andy Cow from Shed Aquarium for designing our methodology and providing equipment. We'd like to thank Candice, Alana, and Eddie for advising our research project. 
and we'd like to thank Alan Stoner and Claire Thomas for providing historical data, Logan for the ArcGIS maps, and Abby Gordon for the photos. And these are our citations. Any questions? Yeah, so the question was um, what regulations can be put in place to save the Queen Conch. Uh, currently, the regulation is that the lip thickness has to be 5 millimeters, but the um, new data shows that a sexually mature adult has a lip thickness of 15 mil millimeters, and so we would need more funding to put that regulation in place, but that would definitely help the populations because it would allow conch to reproduce. Yes. Is there any indication the Bahamian government is worried about this or may take stronger action? Um, so right now, one of the uh, goals, of the question was, um, are there any uh, regulations that might be put in place? Um, like, is the Baham Bahamian government interested in this problem? Um, and right now, the Baham Bahamian government is looking to protect 20% of their coastline by 2020. And so this study um, can help push them to protect more conch areas. Was the methodology for counting the same as in the prior study? Maybe other guys were just better counters. <laughs> uh, the question was, was the methodology for counting the same uh, as it was in the prior study? Um, Yes, we changed our methodology for from using lip thickness um, to determine life stage to using the estimation of this as 10 centimeters, so we could more quickly assess the area, but also more easily compare it to the historical data. But this, this amount of people you had looking and stuff like that was the same? Yes, that was the same. So on your study, you also took uh, temperature data for each um, but did the, pre, the prior study do that also, and do you know if there's any ocean temperature change over time, and might that be impacting population? Um, the question was, did the previous study also take temperature and depth data, and did that affect the amount of juvenile conch? Um, so we do not know that, but that would be an interesting comparison to do. Also, is it is conch something that lends itself to um, an aquaculture?